Hello everyone, as part of learning uh, Hadoop, uh, Big Data with Hadoop and Spark, uh, we will be talking about uh, in detail uh, the MapReduce, distributed processing with MapReduce. Now before talking about that, we will be learning some of the terminology. The first one would be scaling out. What exactly is meant by scaling out? Say for example, we have a very smaller data set and I want to process it using MapReduce with Hadoop. In such cases, because the data set is small, the data, everything can be located in one node and MapReduce will process it faster. On the other hand, when I have huge amounts of data in my data set, which cannot be accommodated in a single split, in such case, what a HDFS system will do? It will try to break your data set into input splits or you also call them as splits. In such cases, when they cannot be accommodated in a single block, what happens with the processing? See, just go through this. If the data size is huge, huge we need to store the data in a distributed file system and which makes it uh, MapReduce computation to be done on every node wherever we have the data split, right? So this happens through the resource management system of Hadoop which we call as YAN, yet another resource negotiator which we will see very soon in detail. Now how the data flows when MapReduce job is getting executed, right? So let us see again some terminology associated with MapReduce execution then we will go ahead with how the MapReduce job is getting executed. The first one, what exactly do we mean by a job, right? The unit of work which we submit to MapReduce is called as a job. So a MapReduce job is a unit of work which the clients want to be executed and it consists of input data and the user has written a MapReduce program and we also give some configuration information. I will show this in one of the examples in the later session. Then what is a task? We talked about job, now we are talking about task. Sometimes we generally use these two terms interchangeably, but when you are talking about Hadoop, you need to distinguish between these two. Job is the entire work which the user wanted to perform. So he wrote a MapReduce program, he submitted the input data also and you are giving some configuration information. Now what is a task? Hadoop runs the job by dividing it into tasks. So whatever job we have submitted, that job will be divided into tasks. The tasks are of two types map tasks and reduce tasks. Because we are working with map reduce, we will be talking about these two types of tasks. And these tasks are scheduled by YARN on various nodes, how they have to get executed, which data split they have to work with, uh, where the output is to be stored, all such configuration issues are handled by YARN. And there are two types of tasks, map task and reduce task. Now, we also use the word called split. What exactly is a split? Whenever you are working with smaller files, generally the file can be accommodated on a single node. When the file size is very huge, HDFS will try to uh, split it into various blocks of data. The default HDFS split we know it is 128 MB. Now when you are working with MapReduce, if you do not specify what should be the input split size, it takes the HDFS default block size which is 128 MB. The user does not like HDFS block size should be same as my MapReduce input split. The user has a choice of specifying what should be the input split size, right? Then. Hadoop does its best to run the map task on a node where the input data resides in HDFS and we call it as locality optimization. Let me talk about this. Say for example, we have a data set and it is split into three splits. Say for example, when 
these splits are when these splits are getting stored on the cluster say for example one split is stored on a one split is stored on node b one split is stored on node c right now my map reduce code say for example is also located on the data split wherever it is there on the same node suppose map task is also located now map task is working with the split a how do i access do i need to use any network bandwidth for that definitely not when my data and processing both are on the same node we call this as locality optimization why it is called a locality optimization no need of data transfer you need not use any network bandwidth which is a costlier resource when you are working with distributed systems so because of all these advantages and accessing data on my local machine will be faster compared to accessing it from some other machine on the network so with all these things put together when split and map task both are on the same node we call it as locality optimization on the other hand say for example consider we have a cluster built in in one of the lab locations of our institution in such case suppose the input split is on system 1 and my map task is running on a processor of system 15 and they both are in the same cluster they both are connected via one network configuration in such case the process is trying to access the data which is there in the same cluster we call this as on rack configuration on rack they both are on the same rack rack in the sense same cluster right on the other hand say for example uh, we have a cluster built in this campus and we have a cluster built in some other campus of our institution in such case say for example data is available here in the cluster which is there in this campus and map task is initiated on some other system which is there in the other campus now how does the map task access the input split via the network which are there in two different clusters right so we call this as off rack access i will show you these things in a diagram now consider this diagram in this case in case 1 data as well as the map task both are on the same machine we complete the task with local access this is the example for locality optimization when data and processing is happening in a single machine this is locality optimization consider case 2 these are the nodes which are on the same cluster say for example node 4 5 and 6 are machines which are there on the same cluster same network in such case my map task is in node 4 and my data is in node 5 where is the network access within the same network we are trying to access we call this as on rack access on the other hand there are two clusters rack 1 rack 2 now the third case talks about my map task is running in node 3 of rack 1 you can also call it as cluster 1 node 3 of rack 1 and my data is residing in node 6 belonging to the second cluster in such case the data transfer processing access both will happen across the clusters across the racks we call this kind of access as off rack access so what is the concept we are trying to deal with we are trying to learn the concept of how the data is flowing in map reduce so the answer would be the data can process or the data can flow in a map reduce task in three possible ways locality on rack off rack three types of data flows we need to discuss fine my data is there my map task ta started running and once i finish the map task i need to store my output where does the map task stores it output right after the map task one more task has to run what do we call it as reduce task right so the output from the map task will be fed as input to the 
reduce task. So, till the reduce task comes and consumes this where the map task is trying to feed its output in which location will it store right. So, map tasks always write their output on to the local disk. What is the local disk? The local system or the disk where the map task is running in that machine it will try to write the output right. So, please remember map task always writes the output onto the local drive right. We call this as intermediate output right. So, the output from map task is always known as intermediate output. Once it is trying to store in the local drive, the reduce task will come and take it as input and finishes the job and writes the output onto remember the words reducer task after finishing its job it will write the final output on to the HDFS. Try to see the difference map task is writing the output on to the local drives which we call as the intermediate output. The reducer task taking this intermediate output from map task as input does its job and writes the final output of the task or job onto HDFS. Now, the question arises why cannot the map task write its intermediate output onto HDFS? Why it is writing onto local drive? The reason being whenever we are writing anything onto HDFS, default by default it goes with some replication. Say, for example, we have set the replication factor as 3. So, if I am writing the intermediate output onto HDFS, if the map task writes the intermediate output onto the uh, HDFS, because of the default replication factor, the intermediate output is also replicated, which is waste of uh, space for us, right? Because the intermediate output is not the final output, the final output will be generated by the reducer. So, the reducer output will be maintained on HDFS and the intermediate output from the map task will be maintained on the local drive. Once reducer has written the final output onto HDFS and the task is about to complete, it will flush out the intermediate output written by the map task from the local drives. Automatically, intermediate output will be deleted from the local drives, right? So, just go through these things, map task writes it on the local drive. So, storing it on the HDFS with replication will be wastage of space. So, if the node is running the map task wherever it is failing, if the node fails, right? In such case, uh, just what is happening, try to see this one. If the node running the map task fails, before the map output has been consumed by the reduce task, then what is Hadoop doing? It automatically reruns the map task on some other node which is available in the cluster and recreates the map output, right? And reduce tasks do not have the advantage of data locality. Why? Because reduce task is running on some other machine and it has to consume the intermediate output written by the map task which is running on some other system. So, reduce task may not add enjoy the advantages of locality optimization, right? Now, I will talk about this with an example, uh, with an example diagram. Say for example, my input file which I have given to a map reduce task is divided into three splits. Consider for example, the file is divided into three splits, split 0, split 1, split 2. As we have mentioned, whenever you are trying to execute a map reduce job, you will give the input data, you will write the map reduce program and some configuration information. Now, in my example, my input data is divided into three splits. For every split, one map task will get executed, right? So, there are five splits the map program whatever you have written will be replicated automatically five times and it works on each split. Now, again in this split I have 25 records. For every record the map function 
will run in parallel. So, if this split has 25 records, 25 map function replications will be running in parallel just to take advantage of the distributed processing, right. So, map 1, this map function is running on split 0 and it generates some intermediate output. Similarly, split 1 is worked with map function and it generates the intermediate output. Similarly, split 2 intermediate output. These intermediate outputs are shuffled and sorted based on the key values and they are also merged based on the common key values and that input is fed to reduce task. If you try to understand till here map, reduce, map program is running and this is the final intermediate output generated by the map task. This output from map task is fed as input to the reducer which will generate the final output, right. Now, for every split I told there are number of map tasks automatically created and here I am showing only one reducer, right. So, if you try to understand whenever you are working with uh, a function or a task, if there is a single output you are expecting from the job running, maybe you are sufficing with one reducer. Say for example, I want to generate two parts of input, two parts of output, sorry. Uh, what do we mean by that? Say for example, I want to generate the topper from each branch of our institution and say for example, I have four branches. How many reducers? Four reducers have to be given, right? Corresponding to every branch, it will try to generate one reducer and four reducers will be running. One will take from the intermediate output, it will try to take out only one particular branch data. Another reducer will take the second branch data. That is how the output will be given to the output from the map task will be given to the reducer and it will generate the final output. In such case, you will get part 0, part 1, part 2, part 3. If at all you have four branches in the institution and you wanted to generate a branch wise report. So, I will show you that also. If you see in this example, my input data is split into three. So, three map tasks are running and how many outputs are we expecting? By seeing the number of reducers, you can tell you are trying to expect two outputs. So, the output from map task will be segregated according to the key value for each reducer. If you see now, the output from map task is also segregated into two. If you have three outputs, the output from map task will be segregated into three and corresponding to the common value, the merging happens and corresponding to the first branch, say for example, the data will go to reduce and corresponding to the second branch, the data will go to second reducer and it is generating the final output part 0, part 1. So, how many outputs are we getting? Two outputs corresponding to each one, right. So, just go through this single reducer, single output from the entire job, multiple reducers, how many number of reducers are there? Those many outputs you can expect from the map reduce job. Now, there are a special kind of map reduce jobs wherein the map function directly generates the output. We call such kind of map reduce jobs as zero reduce tasks, right? They do not have a reducer. Whatever output we are getting from the map function will be the final output and that will be directly written on to the HDFS that will be called as a zero reduce map reduce task, right. So, as part of our lab syllabus, we will be writing programs for a single reducer job, multiple reducer jobs, zero reduce jobs, we will be doing that. So, I will be explaining these programs in the later classes. And just go through this Hadoop streaming into how many languages you can write the program, 
uh, as part of the sessions, we will be working with Java coding. You can also write in Python, Ruby, Scala, various languages are there with which you can start writing the MapReduce jobs. But in all the examples which I am working, I will try to show in Java code. And what will be the input looking like? What will be the output looking like? The input to the map task will be the normal file whatever you try to submit. It could be a CSV file, it could be a DAT file, it could be a text file. Whatever is the input, you submit it to the map. From the map, you are going to get the output always in the form of key value pairs. The output from map task is always key value pair where the key and value are separated by a tab space. Right? These key value pairs are fed as input to the reduce task and the final output is also a tab separated key value pair. Thank you.